Hey everyone, and thank you so much for coming back and visiting with me here today on my channel. Today we are actually going to be making a pair of earrings, and we're going to use some of these beads. Um, so I think they're just really, really pretty. And so I'm hoping the angle this time is a little bit better for y'all, um, and that you guys can see all the little um, different beads that we will be using. Um, I'm also going to kind of go over some of the tools that are most commonly used with making jewelry, and what they do. So um, let's go ahead and get started. So these are actually just little gold plated uh, lever back ear wires. And um, for anyone that's not familiar with making jewelry, if you're really familiar, this is probably going to be a super basic class, so um, it may not be the right class for you. But um, but in any case, so these are called lever backs, and that's because they have a little lever, and they clip in your ear. I love these because they stay in your ear, and I just think they give a really nice uh, profile to a pair of earrings, so that the emphasis is just whatever you add to the earring, and not necessarily um, the ear wire itself. Sometimes, you know, a simple ear wire and a, and a beautiful dangle is all that makes all the difference in the world. So that's what these are. Um, sorry, it seems really close to me, but I'm hoping that helps you guys to see everything. Now these here, I will scoot them up a little bit. These are actually crimp beads. Now, on, in my last video, I actually used a copper crimp bead, and these ones are actually gold-plated. So they have kind of a brassy look to them. So if you can kind of see hole there. Oops, that one just fell. But um, a couple of those in there. But um, these are just little two millimeter crimp beads, and they have, I believe, a one millimeter hole. So when you buy crimp beads, you actually buy them on how big they are on the outside, as well as what their inside diameter is. Just so you know. And most packages will say on there, typically. Um, I order mine online through Fire Mountain Gems, and it says on there specifically what the size is. Um, this is called a head pin. And that's because if you look right there, if I can get to focus, it has what looks like the head of a nail on it. And that is so your beads don't fall off. Okay, so it's called a head pin. Mine are... I believe two inch head pins. I think they're two inch head pins. Um, and I love this size because I feel like it's the most useful. Now, if you are um, expecting all of your straight pins to come out completely straight, they do not, unfortunately. Head pins, eye pins, um, anything like that, because it is a wire, it's gonna be kind of wrinkly or crimpy or you know wavy, whatever. Some of them will be straighter than others. Really not a huge deal and not a deal breaker. It doesn't mean that the package is defective or anything else like that. It's just a reality of life. It's a wire and it is what it is. Um, and I believe these are 22 gauge. Pretty sure. I think these are 22 gauge. But that's, again, one of those things where when you buy them, it'll say on the description. Um, it'll give you the length. And then it will give you the diam or the uh, gauge of the wire itself. Okay. Alrighty. Now to go over the tools that we'll be using. Uh, these are called bent nose pliers. They're also uh, bent chain nose pliers. Okay. For obvious reasons, they are bent. Okay, these are awesome if you're going to be opening and closing jump rings. They also have a jump ring tool, but I don't bother with that. It's just another un it's just another tool, and it's unnecessary, I think. Um, most tools, if you buy them, a lot of them will come in a set, and this um, this one did. So I have my um, my bent chain nose there. These are also these are chain nose. Okay. Also called needle nose pliers. I think most people are probably familiar with that vernacular um, for them in the in the trades of you know other things. But in jewelry making, it's chain nose. Um, these two together are awesome um, 
for wire wrapping, working with like the ear wires, head pins, that sort of thing. Okay. Um, again, these are my um, my flat nose pliers. As I told you, look like a duck bill in the last video. The ones that also that lady chewed up because that's what she does. Um, here are my flush cutters again. I do have a pair of diagonal cutters, but I couldn't find them. So if I find them in the middle of making this video, then I will go ahead and show them to you. But they're basically the same concept. They're just, they look like, um, if your husband has a bunch of tools, he probably calls them dykes. That's what they're called, are diagonal cutters. Okay, so that's that. But this, these are the flush cutters. Um, and then of course, these are round nose. And I'll see if I can get this to focus and so you guys can see it. Because again, I'm sorry, it's like so close. Like, it's like 3D TV. Um, what focus? What focus? Maybe. Well, there you go. You can kind of see it. They are round nosed. And this is what you need to make loops. Okay. Very, very important for making loops. All right. So, let me see actually really quickly if I can find the other pair of pliers. Because now that's going to make me crazy because I couldn't find them the first time. One second. Okay, I am back. I found them. So these are the diagonal cutters. And, um, I don't know if there's no them or not. But as you can see, they have that kind of a tip. And so if you can kind of see, whatever it cuts, it's going to cut in kind of that angle. So also another very useful tool. Okay. So, that being said, we will go ahead and we will get started on making a pair of earrings. Alright, let me get myself situated and we'll go ahead and get cracking. Okay, I'm going to actually see if I can't get the angle on this a little bit better. So it's not quite so close, but you guys can still see. As you see, my sewing machine is in this forever position right there on my table. Okay, um, hopefully you guys can still see this okay. So these are actually on here and they are hand knotted. Um, and I think the idea was that you could turn this into a bracelet or a bracelet necklace or something like that, but I'm, that was never my intention when I bought it, so not really too worried about it. Um, so I like the flush cutters because you can get right up against the bead and remove whatever is there and so in this case it's just a little piece of thread recording so this is gonna be kind of tedious but it happens so go ahead and cut them all off and let's see probably actually only need two of the brown I'd like to get a couple of these aqua colored ones I think would be pretty And I'm just going to try to make a basic pair of earrings. Um, you know, as this kind of progresses, I'll probably make, you know, more um, that are a little more complicated, I suppose. But for right now, we're just going to go ahead and do this. We don't actually need the crimp beads for this particular one, but I wanted to kind of show you a different crimp bead than I had shown you last time. Um, okay, so... Now, the fun part about making jewelry is that you get to decide like how you want it to look and where you want things to go. So, got the turquoise, got some brown ones. These ones here are kind of a, I don't know if you can see, but these actually have like a metallic coating on them. And it's almost an Aurora Borealis coating, but this is actually a metallic coating. So the bead itself is actually kind of purpley blue, and then it has that coating on it, which gives it just a little extra flash. These are most likely check beads. Um, the check, like check fire polished, are extremely popular. They're almost as they're on a very similar um, as far as flash to a Swarovski crystal without the price. They're not quite as good as a Swarovski, but they're very, very close. I mean, I use a lot of Czech fire polish beads for all kinds of things. They're actually quite lovely. They're actually a very, very lovely bead. Um, and the quality on them is very, very lovely too. But they are a glass bead where the Swarovski crystal actually has lead content. 
and it's the lead content in the glass that is what makes it a crystal as opposed to like a crystal formed in nature. So when they add lead to glass, um, it actually makes a crystal like you would use for like jewelry making, Swarovski crystal. I'm sure we're all pretty familiar. Um, and I believe, I want to, I'll have to look it up again, but um, if I'm not completely off my rocker, it's something like 18%, I believe, lead is what, is what makes Swarovski crystal so different from other companies' crystals that are about 10 to 12. So, and that's, you know, the percentage of lead content to the glass. Uh, but I could be slightly off, but I know that they do have a higher lead content. Okay, these are actually a spacer, and these are what they call like a nugget spacer. And um, a rondelle would be a round version of something like this. But this is just a spacer, and it's kind of a nuggety shape, kind of give it like a natural um, look to, to the spacer when stacked. Um, so that's kind of a fun tidbit for you. Now what we will do is, I do have another package of, I do have some more head pins in case we need them, but so what I like to do is I like dangles and I like them when they kind of move around and I like them when they kind of shift a little bit and they have a little bit of movement to them. I really like that. So now we just have to pick how we want the colors to go. So sometimes what I'll do is, this isn't probably how it's going to look at the end, but I'll put my beads on there and I'll kind of decide, like, do I want them like that? Do I want a spacer between them? See the flash on that because of the metal metallic backing on that? And let's see, this one's also coated. Um, probably a titanium coating on this one. Anyhow, sorry, I easily distracted shiny objects. Do I want to put a spacer between them? So I will actually do this a little bit, and I'll kind of go back and forth and decide, you know, do I want to do it this way? Do I want to do it that way? Just kind of taking a look at all my different, you know, what all my options are. Do I like how that looks? Now, spacers typically, and this is not always, you know, this is not like a hard, fast truth, but in my experience, Spacers tend to have much bigger holes than some of the other beads, so sometimes it's hard to put a spacer at the end. In this case, it's actually pretty good. It's pretty, it's fitting in there pretty nicely. It's pretty flush. But I've had spacers before where you go to put them on, and the the hole size is actually bigger than my head pin, and then that gets kind of frustrating because you go to put it on there and it just falls right off. Um, so and you'll find that too that some head pins might have a little bit smaller of a head on there and you'll have the same problem where it just kind of like wants to fall through and doesn't want to sit right but these ones look like they're probably okay which is actually a good thing because that means it can be a base okay so if i like that i can either choose to put another spacer on there and kind of sandwich my bead between the two or I can opt to simply not use a spacer at all and just have that as a dangle. Okay. Um, I don't know that I'm actually going to use a spacer because I don't really know if that's necessary. So what we're going to do is, in this case, we're actually just going to do a simple loop. Um, in another video, I'll show you a wrapped loop, but in this one, we're just going to do a simple loop. Okay. So the way I make my, my simple loop is I, as you can see, I'm kind of pinching it between my two finger, my finger and my thumb, I'm going to pinch hard, and I pull, I bend the wire towards my nail, okay, bend it. So now when you look at it, okay, you can see it's just kind of sitting there. Now, you're going to need your round nose pliers, okay, and you're going to hug, let's see, I'm going to hug the round nose very close. So I'm going to turn this so you guys can see it. Okay, let's see if it'll focus. Come on, you bastard. Okay, so the idea is, whoops, I'm going to do it again. Okay, let's see, where is it going to focus at? Right there. Okay, so when you 
put your plier in, you want to have it right up against that bend, okay? So it's right up against the bend. And then what you're going to do is you're going to pull and bend the wire towards yourself, okay? Around, and you have to move your, your plier, so if you, saw, if you watch the action, okay? So, let's see. I've got my pliers here, okay? I pulled the wire over, and then I'm just going to slowly walk and pinch my pliers around that loop. And then what that does is once you get the plier away from the, the top of the bead itself, okay, now you've got a little loop around the bead. All right, and I'll show you that again because it's kind of... Sorry, I have like little threads on here now from cutting off that brown thread. Okay, it's a little fuzzies. All right, so we're pinching our bead. You're gonna pull it towards your thumb, right? Pull it towards your nail. Okay, so there you go, pull. Put the plier in, and you want it as close to that corner as you can get it. So right there's a little corner. I'm trying to do this on camera is like kind of silly, it seems like. Okay, so right there's the corner, and there's your back jaw of your plier, okay? And then you're going to take the wire, you're going to pull it towards yourself, or bend it towards yourself, right? Okay, so now it's kind of, it'll look kind of like that. Okay, so then you're going to walk your plier, because remember your plier was right here up against that joint that we made, okay? And then we brought the wire around it. So in order to be able to pull this wire back to the very back part there, you really have to move your plier out of the way. Okay. So then once you've got your plier out of the way, you can proceed to pull it and complete the action. Now, if it gets a little cattywampus like that one, get kind of a little bit, you just pull it back. Okay. And then, there you go. And now we have two, because earrings come in pairs, right? Okay, so that's a simple loop, and we're gonna actually use our diagonal cutters. I am a huge stickler for good mechanics when it comes to making jewelry, and yeah, so I'm, it's hard for me to buy jewelry in the store, especially beaded things, because I know I can make them myself. But anyhow, I digress. Um, all right. So again, diagonal cutter, and we want to go, see how it's laying right there, and you can see this back loop? Okay, you don't want to cut the back loop, you want to cut the one that's on top, so this one. And you're going to cut it, when if you see right there, my cutter is right up against, come on, focus, where the loop is, right there, okay, and you're just going to trim. Okay. Now, this is where your pliers come in handy. So these are the bent nose ones. Now, while holding the bead, okay, you put your if you put your finger on the head pin, it kind of stabilizes it. And if you hold the bead, it keeps the bead from spinning all over the place, which is I don't know, it doesn't really matter, I guess, probably not. In my brain it does, so I've just always made them the same way. Okay. And there you go. And now what I did is I took my plier on the open part. See where it's open? Maybe. See it's open? Okay. And then holding my bead, holding the head pin, so you know, make it stable. Okay, let's see. Is that going to focus? I'm pushing away from myself towards where that original bend was that we made with our nail. Okay. Um, I know it seems it probably seems kind of silly, but I've actually um, some of the comments I've received in beating contests that I've actually won or placed really high in is that my mechanics are really good. So I'm definitely a stickler for that. So there you go, a nice little loop on both of those. Okay. Now. Um, I don't buy head pins, I make them. 
or I, I don't buy eye pins, I make them. And I make them by actually cannibalizing a head pin. And it's usually because head pins tend to be less expensive to just buy a whole bunch of head pins and have them than it is to just kind of buy a bunch of head pins and eye pins, especially since I hate how big the loops are on eye pins. Eye pins tend to have really big loops and I tend to like as small a loop as I can get away with. And um, yeah, so that's just, it's my thing, I guess, whatever. So I just flush cutters pulling up against that head and I just clip it off. And then you're just left with like this little, little piece of nothing. But it's okay. I don't mind. Um, okay, so now we're going to actually make... Now, I don't know if you've ever seen a rosary. Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. Um, if you haven't, you can actually look them up. But rosaries actually have links. And the link is actually made with two. has a simple loop on each end, and then in the middle of that is sandwiched a bead. It's pretty simple. It makes kind of a chain. So... Kind of gauge where you're, you think your middle is going to be kind of at. And then, because that's where you're going to be putting your bead. So, I mean, you know, if your bead is like really huge, you're probably going to want a longer head pin. Or you can actually just buy wire on the spool and make your own eye pins that way. Um, I've done that before as well, but in this case, we're just going to do it this way. So, you're going to go ahead and try to gauge where that's going to be at. Okay, and then you're going to, kind of like you did with your nail, except you're doing it with the plier itself. And... Okay, so I just kind of grabbed a hold of that. Let's see, I'll show you on this one. I haven't cut the end off of this one yet, but it won't matter. Um, so, I'll show you the action again. So you have it sandwiched. Figure out how long of a length you need. And then you're just going to push this towards away, well, away from you, not towards you, away from you. Okay? And it makes that nice little L shape. In this case, I didn't take the head off, and it won't matter because I'm actually going to turn this into my first loop. So, just like we did before, but we had the bead on there, you're going to put your plier up against that L, right against that bend, and then you're going to pull that head pin towards yourself. Oops. And I want a little cattywampus because I was trying to look through the camera, but everything is like, it's a funny angle from the camera, actually. Okay, so... You see what I did there? I just kind of pulled it through, and now I have a little loop. Okay, we'll do that again with this one. Okay, so the lower jaw, upper jaw, lower jaw, is up against that bend, and then my finger is going to pull that end wire towards me. Okay, I'm going to adjust my plier and, pull, and complete the action by pulling that wire all the way around the jaw. Okay, and then again, there we have our little loop. It's actually easier. I probably should have shown you this way first, sorry. My bad. But then you can see right there, maybe, focus, okay, see. Okay. And I got my plier right there up against it as close as I can. And just pushing down, or squeezing the pliers, and that makes my loop, or the opening right there, okay? And we're going to do the same thing on this one. So, you can see it. Let me move these out of the way. There's my loop. Here's my plier. Up against, here's that back part of the original bend. My pliers sit right there. And we're just going to pinch down. And voila. Okay. Now, because... I had pulled forward. I like them flat, so I kind of like just flatten that out a little bit. Now in this case, because I need this loop to stay open, we're not going to close this one yet. Um, and I will show you why in just a second, but we're going to go ahead and make sure that, see how it's like when you make them, sometimes they're kind of like bent a little bit, so you just flatten them out. You can use any pliers, it doesn't really matter. Um, oh, and I meant to tell you. So the difference between jeweler's pliers and like your husband's pliers is mine are smooth on the inside. Um, I know that I've seen at Walmart where they've sold pliers that are supposed to be for jewelry. Don't buy those. A lot of them have teeth on them and that mars the heck out of your metals. So um, jewelry metals tend to be a little bit softer than like, you know, just going out and buying a spool of hardened wire. 
So you just want to be aware of that. And so you want smooth jaws. So this one, smooth jaw, um, smooth, smooth. Um, sorry if my fingers are all weird because you're in like in weird spaces because everything looks odd on the camera. I think I said that like 20,000 times now. And again, smooth. Okay, so you just want to make sure that anything that you are using for jewelry making is smooth jawed and not doesn't have the teeth. Like your husband's pliers, that's really not going to work. Okay, that's going to just mar up your metals really, really badly. And that's never a good thing. Okay, so we have left this side open, but I need two more eye pins because we're going to make a dangle. So here's another one. And then where's my handy dandy bag? Yeah, okay. So here it is. I'm gonna get another pin. Okay. So like I said, these don't matter if they're kind of, you know, bent up a little bit. Like, you see how it's bent? I just take my pliers and I just flatten them out. It doesn't really matter. You can also like put them in, like, a, like run like a cloth across them and stuff, and smooth them out with your fingers or whatever. Totally up to you, really makes zero difference. Especially when you're making eye pins like this because, or using them at all, because it's gonna be such a small, um, just, you're making little tiny loops and you're using such a small amount to make the beads, it doesn't really matter if it's crooked. It just, it has no bearing. Okay, so, where did I put my flat nose there? Flat nose pliers about halfway down or where you think the middle is going to be, leave that spot open, so go just a little bit above middle, okay, and then you're going to take, oops, now you can do this, like I said, you can do this two ways, you can push the wire, you can, or you can just bend with the plier and put your thumb up against it, um, there's really no right or wrong way to, to bend the wire, I mean you can do it all by hand if you wanted to and just bend them, sometimes I'll make a whole bunch of head pins, or I mean a bunch of eye pins, to make a bunch of like dangles or whatever and I'll take four or five pieces of wire and I'll bend them all at the same time. It really doesn't matter. Okay, so we're bending it, round nose pliers, in the elbow, pull towards yourself, twist your wrist about a quarter of a turn. I guess probably the best way to describe that. I'm going to wrap that wire all the way around. There you go, a loop. Try to get this up. I trimmed my nails because they were just kind of getting in the way, so apparently now I also need to moisturize my hands. Anyhow, um, in the corner there, pull towards yourself, twist your wrist about a quarter of a turn, complete that right there, okay. And then, once again, diagonal cutters right into the corner of that loop, pinch it, and there's your loop. And the same thing here. Okay, pinch it in the corner there. And now you got a loop. Okay, go ahead and flatten these out. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and put on our other bead. Okay. So I'm going to do two of the darker browny colored ones. They look brown in this. I don't know. I think they might be just kind of a smoky gray color. I have no idea what color they are, actually. And then we're going to do two of these light ones with the metallic finish. Okay. And since I really don't know what order I'm still putting these in yet, <laughs> it doesn't matter. So, um, depending on what your school of thought is on the process, um, if it's easier for for you to kind of leave your loop here and turn it so you can kind of put your finger against it and kind of hold on to the bead at the same time. You can do that way. You can give it a half a turn and do, um, you know, and finagle it that way. I, you know, you kind of, it just kind of depends on what's more comfortable for you. At the end of the day, you basically just want, again, to bend your wire like you did before so it's against your, your nail. I find that this way is more comfortable for me, but that's, you know, again, that's me. It's no rhyme or reason, no right way or wrong way. Just whatever's comfortable. Again, pulling it down against my nail. Um, I have really strong nails. If you don't have very strong nails, um, you can always, let me see, chain nose again, 
and then pull, oops, we have to go up a little bit away from the bead, about that much, and then just pull it, and then just kind of rock it. Um, I have really strong nails, and I don't know, it doesn't bother me, but I know some people are, or if you have like, um, I totally lost what they're called. Fake nails? Um, heaven help me. Acrylic. Thank you. Good lord, that was difficult. Um, so, did I mention that English is actually my second language? However, anyhow, I digress. So, anyway, so you can do it either way. I do it with my nail, it doesn't bother me any. Um, so yeah, so it, it doesn't bother me at all to use my nail at all, so there's that. Okay. So, just like we did with the first bead, you're going to go in there and get as close as you can to that corner, right? As close as we can, and then we're going to pull the wire towards herself, give our wrist a quarter of a turn, complete that action. Okay, now, of course, they're like opposing loops. We can fix that here in just a second, if it bugs you. I don't know that it actually makes a whole lot of difference to me. Sometimes I fix it, sometimes I don't. It just depends. Alright, so again, we're in that corner, pulling that loop towards ourselves. And I'm hoping you guys can see this. I'm not totally off camera every time, because I'm trying to see around my camera so I can see what I'm doing. Um, and these will get better, I hope, video-wise, <laughs> as I get more familiar with angles and setting up and stuff. Okay, so that one went a little... I don't know what I was thinking with that one, but it went a little weird. But it's okay, because as you see, we just kind of adjust our plier and just kind of move that loop. Not a biggie. One of the things I love about making jewelry is it's super forgiving. Um, and, you know, I have made jewelry for... well, a really long time. And one of the things I love about it is it's very relaxing for me, and it's also very, um, I think we're in that corner, sorry, and then just snip. It's very relaxing, it's very forgiving, and there's so many different styles, there's so many different things that can be done, there's so many different, you know, as many types of beads and colors of beads that there are, there's also a ton of just different ways to use them. I've, you know, I've known people that have made some incredible things with seed beads. I don't really have a lot of patience for seed beads. I just, I really don't. And it's a shame because they're absolutely gorgeous, but I just never have the patience for it. Okay. Um, but yeah, so that's one of the things I love about making jewelry is, again, it's super forgiving. And really, the sky is the limit with whatever you choose to do. Um, and, you know, and these beads were on sale, or they were on clear, uh, yeah. Was it, so it was on sale at Hobby Lobby. They had like a 50% off sale on their strung beads. So it was like $7 for this whole entire thing. I'll make a couple of bracelets. I'll make a pair of earrings. It's awesome. I love that sort of thing. And, you know, it's they're super affordable to make yourself. So if you can make it yourself, why buy, you know, why pay someone else to make something that you can make yourself? And it's unique and it's beautiful and it's something that's just yours. And that's one of the things I love so much about making jewelry. Um... Okay, so here we have all of our little beads. Now this is, if I was making a rosary, I would just connect, you know, a whole bunch of them and you put the chain in the middle and one of these days I'll have to do a, um, I'll have to do a rosary bead tutorial because I actually love making rosaries. I'm not Catholic, but I love making rosaries for some reason. It's super, um, I don't know, it's just really satisfying to make them, I guess, is my point. Okay, so we have our beads, and now we have to decide, like, so we obviously know that these ones are going to be the bottom because I put the head pin right there. Okay, and then the loops on these ones are closed. Okay, so, um, let's see, I need, okay, bent nose and chain nose. Okay. So this one's closed, so that's fine. And I think I'll do the dark brown. Do I want to put the blue? Okay, so this is where I kind of sit here and I play around with it again, like I did before. 
But I think I kind of like how that looks. Where it's... Let's see, can you see that? So I think I kind of like this. Where it's like the light way brown and then the darker one. I think it's kind of pretty. Or should I move it this way? Hmm, I think I'll do it this way. Okay. So remember we left the sides, these are actually both open. So to continue opening the loop, you just put your plier in and I'll show you again. Actually, I probably should have shown you better that one in the first place. Okay, I'm going to string that on there. Oops, bumped it. Okay, bent nose. Actually, I don't need the other ones. So bent nose, okay. And then you're gonna push, you're gonna twist your wrist away from you. And then just make sure it's completely closed, okay. Now this one is also open, but it doesn't need to be. So we're gonna go ahead and close this one. So again, grasp it with your plier and push away from yourself. And if you need to, you can just kind of push it towards itself and continue the, the twisting motion. Okay, so now this side is also open, okay, but to make it open a little bit more, we're going to go ahead and twist it half a twist towards us, which is a little bit, okay, oops, can you see that, just a half little twist, and put the bead on, okay, and then just reverse, so now you're going to push towards your finger, okay. And sometimes I have to, when I'm gripping the plier, I kind of wiggle it towards itself a little bit. So it feels like it's going to overlap, but it doesn't really. And then I just pinch it and make sure it's closed all the way. Okay. And now this is open. These have an opening right here, just like you would for a jump ring. But since this side's already open, there's no need to use it. So, because that, whoops, because that opening was already there. Because we didn't close any of our loops, I just the same thing as I did with the bead. I just kind of wiggled the, the earrings loop on there. And then again, the same thing, just half a twist. So it meets up with itself and then there you go. Um, and I think that's actually really pretty. Okay, so there's that one. And then we're gonna do another one. Um, there's the turquoise piece. Okay. Um, I was going to show you how to fix it if it bugs you. You basically just pinch them with your pliers and you give it half a twist so that your pliers meet up and then now your loops meet up. You see? I don't worry about it. Honestly, it doesn't make any difference. Okay, so half a twist. And you can use whatever pliers, it doesn't matter. Again, I'll thread that on there. Twist it back towards your finger and pinch it. Okay. And then we're gonna go ahead and close this half. Oops, close this half because we have the other one is already open. Okay. And then sometimes the loops are already open big enough after I made them, but this one's not. So again, twist it towards yourself a little bit. Put your loop on there and then just give it a little bit of a twist with your hand or with your wrist and then just overlap that and then I'll show you what I did with the other ear wire. Like I said, the ear wires themselves have a little opening right there but since this is already open, you know, it doesn't really matter. Okay. And then closing it again. Okay, and then if you feel like it's a little cattywampus, I just kind of adjust it till I feel like it's nice and straight. And now we have a pair of earrings. Oops. There we go. And, you know, and in no time at all, um, if I was just making these without trying to, you know, explain how to make them, and worrying about camera angles and stuff, these would be, you know, 
two or three minute earrings, honestly, because once you get the hang of making the loops, you'd be amazed at how fast you can like get these out. Um, the same thing with like making rosaries. It's amazing how quickly you can make a rosary and it's so satisfying. Um, alrighty, so that is pretty much um, everything for that. If you have any questions, um, please feel free to go ahead and email me. My email address is in the description. Um, and then also, um, you know, if you, I do make um, oily videos as well, so if you'd like to join my oily tribe, that information is also down below. But if you just like watching the videos that I make, you know, feel free to subscribe and like my videos. Um, constructive criticism is always welcome. Rudeness is not, so don't be one of those. Um, but again, thank you so much for spending a few minutes with me today, and I hope you liked this tutorial, and you guys have an amazing day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.